Welcome back to another episode on the Cornerstone SMP, everybody. And we're starting today off in the shopping district because I've built a little something over here. Yeah, so we have this uh, awesome looking arch right here. Um, these swan designs are completely stolen from the Dol Amroth city over on the Middle Earth Minecraft server. But that's okay, they look awesome and I think they fit in really well under this nice little arch. Um, yeah, what is this build? Well, basically I had the little uh, idea of putting up a board where people could um, put up searches for a helping hand over at their base, basically. That means, for example, if you have a little project you're working on, um, which for me would be my underwater base, my industrial city, and you feel like maybe it would be fun to have someone else who would be yeah, motivated and up to the task, come over to your own base and add a little something of their own. So um, I'll put up, for example, we put my name, Nellis, and then um, we'll have industrial city house, um, circa seven by seven, which would be, I think, fine. So a small little city building. Oh, I'm definitely misspelled house there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's also add that it's underwater in case someone doesn't know and I don't want to scare them off. Um, so there we go. That would be an example and that's also a legitimate search that I'm putting up if anyone's interested of the server members to um, to yeah, build a little something over in my base. Um, they can sign up by placing a piece of paper with their name on it here in the item frame. That way people will know that um, someone's already interested in this project that is being that I have put up. Basically that person can then contact me or I can contact them over on Discord and we can talk about the details. I've also written this down here in the book, uh, you can pause and read through it if you want to, um, but I've basically explained it already. Um, yeah, so I think this could be a fun little way of maybe getting a few collabs going. Um, I'd love to have people come over to my base and add their own touch and their own building style to it and I'd love to do it with other people's bases if they're interested. I think it's just fun um, and could be fun. Maybe someone will sign up and if not then this will I guess just be standing here looking pretty and that is also fine. <laughs> but yeah that's um, just a little thing I kind of on a whim again decided to put up. There is also something pretty awesome over at my base. Yeah look right here. Um, so this is the first place trophy, in case you don't know, of uh, Hicks's building competition. You might remember a few episodes back, um, I... Oh my gosh, I can land. Yes, I can. Um, I added my own little build to Hicks's mountain to his, uh, for his building competition. And apparently our small um, medieval sawmill managed to get first place. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, thank you so much, it says. And Nellis with 16.8 uh, points, we managed to get the win. So that's really awesome. Uh, that made me really happy when Hicks's video came out that we did actually manage to win. Um, I was, I'll admit, I was very terrified of all the big builds up there, but I, uh, apparently, in the end, that's kind of what Hicks liked the best about mine that it was quite small and like fit his initial idea on what the builds were supposed to look like. So yeah, um, that's really awesome. If you want to see all the like um, thought process of Hicks um, behind this uh, awesome event and also um, the way he yeah in the end created all our builds, be sure to check out his video. It's really cool. He, he did a really good job with it. And yeah, once again, thank you to Hicks, of course, for organizing this awesome event. It's been a blast. And I'm just gonna leave this trophy here because it looks great and, <laughs> and it makes me feel proud. Um, but yeah, we're back at the base, of course. Um, and I wanna get some more building done. I haven't actually added a new build in a bit, it feels like. Um, I did put up these five quite quickly and then didn't do as much afterwards. But yeah, I've laid out a little uh, schematic <laughs> right here for our next build, so let's get to it.
With today's build project I wanted to introduce um, a new block to the color palette and that's prismarine as you can see. We have of course used the sandstone, granite, blackstone and normal stone uh, color palette a lot already around the area so I thought let's mix it up a little bit and I think the prismarine works really well. I mean of course it is a very aquatic block <laughs> I guess so no wonder it works. Um, but yeah I've also um, this building right here, it's very unique in its shape um, because yeah, all the builds around here, they're very slim and tall boxes. Um, so again, just a matter of mixing it up a bit. Um, yeah, oh, I'm getting attacked again by a trident. <laughs> this is really, really annoying. So if you have, um, have kind of had the idea floating around your head of making an underwater project, really keep these drowns in mind. Really, really do. Uh, they're very, very annoying very bothersome. While building these three houses um, I had three guys with tridents attack me at once twice. So yeah, <laughs> both of those times were quite close calls um, so yeah be warned it's it's not it's not all all fun but um, it is worth it definitely I mean this looks really cool underwater and it, I don't think it would look as cool just above ground and it de does definitely also have its perks um, for example that you basically have creative flight it has been very convenient for these builds um, but yeah anyway I was talking about this building right <laughs> oh my god <laughs> right I was talking about this building right here um, now as I said it's a bit of a unique shape um, maybe not necessarily what immediately springs to mind when you think industrial revolution city building <laughs> but um, I do think it works and yeah it's nice to have a bit of a difference in shape I also like this like rounded edge on the first building here on the left. Um, also breaks all the monotony up a bit and yeah, I think it works quite well. Um, yeah, we did have a bit of a cave-in down here. Uh, there's a big ravine uh, that goes right under- oh my god! <laughs> there's a big ravine that goes right underneath here um, and it leads into another uh, open ravine here on the right. And that's also kind of the reason why I've stopped where I did stop building now. So as you can see, there's uh, no backs for all three of the buildings. <laughs> that's probably what I'm going to be doing in between episodes, so until the next one. But um, yeah, these ravines, I feel like I'm going to do something with them, I just really don't know what. Um, because I think underwater ravines look awesome and they have like a really special feel to them. But I'm, I don't have really a specific project in mind yet. I think um, before we get to that I want to work on this uh, plaza or whatever here in the middle. But if you have any idea on what we could do with those ravines, um, do drop it down below in the comments. So I'm just over here at my shop. Uh, I don't think I've taken you here in a while. But yeah, I've been doing some more stocking. We've now got this zombie head for sale, for example, which I got recently during a thunderstorm. Um, and also lots of different uh, mob pets in here, which are a lot cheaper, of course, because they're much easier to get. But some fun ones, like uh, the pufferfish, I think they are <laughs> they look really cute. Uh, and dolphins and drowns and stuff like that. I've also put up nether wart as a new little thing, because I had a bunch of them. And I have um, like a small farm in, in the base, so if anybody needs any, they're here. <laughs> and I'll be stocking them up for sure. I also noticed that someone bought four of these banners, so we are making some sales. Not as much as when we opened, of course. Um, hadn't had a run like that since then, but um, yeah, pretty good. It's going pretty well. You might have also heard <laughs> I put up uh, some llamas for sale out here. For in total I've brought over, or I brought over two and then bred two more. Uh, one's already gone. I think the next um, animal I'm gonna put in here once these llamas are all gone is gonna be polar bears. Uh, because I've never actually um, transported polar bears and that could be a fun little thing. Maybe someone wants to buy one. But yeah, I really like how this shop is going at the moment. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun like keeping it stocked and adding something new every now and again when something's sold out. Now for the last bit of today's episode, I want to show you this project right here that a lot of the server members have actually been working on. So we're here at Spawn and I believe Alex and Bodhi were the ones that started working on this little Mediterranean village and it does look really really amazing, I really love the style. Yeah, so the two of them started this project but a lot of the other server members have since then um, kind of added their little thing. 
So Sinji came up with the idea of creating like basically this huge sewer system uh, below the city, stretching out I think as far as Hicks's mountains they want to have a go. Um, and while he was working on that on stream, he mentioned the idea of maybe creating a few rats in there uh, using army stats. And um, I really wanted to give that a try. I thought it sounded really fun. Uh, I've been playing around with Amish Dance for a while and this seemed like a cute little challenge. So this is the one that I came up with um, first. The head is of course again my own head, um, since rats don't actually exist in the game. But yeah, I changed my skin to red skin, <laughs> killed myself a bunch of times to get the head and yeah, this is what I came up with. And I've been adding a few of them already in the sewers down below, so let's hop on in. Uh, yeah, it's really eerie and spooky down here. I love the, f the, the vibe and atmosphere. But as you can see, there's some rats. <laughs> um, so, for example, this little rat's nest down here with one creeping down the wall as well. We've also got one here on the side drinking from the water. Um, and then there's one hanging over there. <laughs> Just hanging. And the last one is sitting here on the side with a piece of paper as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I've made so far and I of course want to add more of them. The only issue is that um, I can only put them in places that are completely finished because once they are um, put in, you can't change any of the blocks around them. So as you can see, if I point at the stair or this block behind her, or oh actually if I go over there it works, but um, the hitbox doesn't even show up. Uh, so if you if you were to, I don't know, piston push this away or something, it would mess up the entire rat. If that would ever be necessary, I'm fine with it. I can redo rats or whatever, but um, yeah, that's I, I tend to avoid it, of course, because it would mean double the work. Um, so I, I've only put them in spots where I felt um, that those were completely finished. And while they've been doing a lot of work, um, a lot of it is half done, as you can see. So we've got all these corners and whatever but the bits in between aren't finished. So I haven't, um, I've only kind of used the space that I got so far. Maybe we can put another one in here. Um, this seems pretty finished, this wall here on this side. This spot is definitely my favorite. <laughs> this entire little room here is just really cool and atmospheric with that one lamp in the middle and I think the reds really add to the atmosphere as well. But yeah, let's put one more down here, uh, just so that I can kind of talk you through the process of how I make these rats. <laughs> Basically, we'll need five armor stands per rat, so I'll need to make a few more. Um, we'll need uh, one for the head, one for the tail, which is a stick, then two for the feet, which are um, two pieces of dye, and then of course the body, which is like grey concrete. I think it kind of looks like fur. Um, I could also use dark grey, that would probably be even more fitting for the head, but this is just what I brought right now and I think it's fine. So I usually start with the body, so we'll put this in his hand, that's the size I'm going with. Just, um, yeah, the light grey concrete in the Amistan's hand at default size. And I think I'm gonna wanna have this red on the wall as well, like uh, the one in the other room. Right, so like this, it's pretty tight against the wall, and then we just have to make the Amistan invisible. And always uh, remember to lock them, of course, because otherwise it will just get very frustrating if you have a lot of unlocked Amistan's in one spot. So next up is the head of the rat, which is a default size army stand, but it's gonna hold the head in its hand, not wear it on its head. Next I'm gonna put in the feet. And of course, last but not least, we'll make the tail, and for this one we're gonna go with the small stand. And with that, uh, the rat is finished. Um, so each of these takes me about 10 minutes to make. In the beginning it took me longer, uh, but now it's fine. And they really, I think, add a lot of life and fun to this, to these, of course, already awesome looking tunnels. And I look forward to uh, getting lost in these in the future, probably. But that will do it for today's video. Um, me and the rats are saying goodbye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I've been Alice and I will see you in the next one. Bye!